at that picture of power, the Triple Crown winner. Hi everyone, I'm Chris Fowler and welcome to Run for the Crown on ESPN Classic. The year is 1997 and the troubled world of horse racing is about to find its lucky charm, or rather, its silver charm. Attendance has been falling dramatically, down almost 20 million in 15 years. But in 1997, as the Derby approaches, horse racing is about to make a comeback. Silver Charm, along with Touch Gold and Freehouse, are about to share in a cherished Run for the Crown. And Silver Charm's trainer, Bob Baffert, comes to the Derby hoping to reverse his fortunes, still suffering from the heartache at Churchill Downs one year before. Long to the front. The half in 46, three quarters in 110 racehorse time. Midway on the turn, unbridled song, drawing clear by two. Halo sunshine. I was training for home and I saw unbridled song starting to was getting tired and leg worried. And all of a sudden we took the lead. It's unbridled song to lose. He's in front. He's in front by two. Here comes. I was actually in front in the Kentucky Derby, and everybody told me whoever's in front of the eighth pole wins the race. And here I'm thinking, boy, I'm home free. And it's Cavanier on the inside and Grindstone on the outside. The Karen and Bailey. Here's the finish. I get too tight to call. They hit the wire, and I thought maybe he held on that horse is so far outside and and for an instant there, I sort of felt like it was to, to win the Kentucky Derby and they hung the numbers up. It was the most, you know, very disappointing. It was exciting to be that close, but at the same time, it was probably the most uh, devastating loss that I'd ever had in my life. And uh, just getting beat in the Kentucky Derby like that, I thought I would never have another chance. One year later, Bob Baffert did have another chance at the Run for the Roses with the Florida-bred gray Silver Charm. However, in the weeks leading up to the Derby, an intense rivalry would develop between Baffert's Silver Charm and a horse named Free House. Both horses had tremendous heart and desire, but more important, neither one liked to lose, and this was never more apparent than in their showdown at the Santa Anita Derby. They have a quarter of a mile to go in the Derby and it's Silver Charm now kicking on for home. Hello on the grandstand side, Sharp Cat at the rail and the grey freehouse steel ruler, a huge long shot running a big one in the blinkers on the outside. Homeward bound and the grey freehouse and Silver Charm, Sharp Cat can find no more. Hello and steel ruler, but it's freehouse in front. I tell you, the turn for home, or actually going all the way around the, the final turn for home, I mean, freehouse was just bottled up begging for me to turn him loose and let him strut his stuff and I, I did that at, at once we straightened away and turned for home and he just went right on by Silver Charm. 50 yards to run and it's going to be Freehouse, Silver Charm comes right back at him. Freehouse came on the outside, went by him like he was just going to win by two and all of a sudden uh, Gary switched dicks and the horse just saw him, he just dug back in again and tried to come by and almost won it. They run to the wire and get a Freehouse and nose to Silver Charm. That horse had an incredible sense of if the eyeballed another horse, he got tougher. He dug in, and that was apparent in that, in that race against Freehouse. And this is what really brought out the, the tenacity of Silver Charm, and, and it would play out that way in the Triple Crown, that it was the, the thing that really elevated him uh, above his rivals. Here I just got beat in the San Anita Derby, but I was, I was so thrilled, I was so happy um, that I thought I knew then I had a true Derby horn. When we return, Bob Baffert gets a second chance to win the Kentucky Derby on Run for the Crown 1997. We now return to Run for the Crown 1997. While Bob Baffert was confident of Silver Charm's chances in the 1997 Kentucky Derby, the memory of Cavanier's heartbreaking loss the year before in the 96 run for the Roses 
still linger. Brian Stone is closing stoutly. I went and had lunch at the Derby Museum. I'd never seen the slideshow there, and they showed the, they showed the slideshow from the year before, and I watched Kevin Neer get beat again. And it probably hit me that week, you know, like, oh my God, it's back, you know, the the uh, the nightmares of Kevin Neer. So uh, I went back and. I became very focused that week. It was one of these things where I have to win this race. This could be my last shot again. And they're up. He's moving fast. And down the stretch they come. Photo finish. And they're off in the Kentucky Derby. On the far outside, Freehouse, the gray, quickly going for the lead. Pulpit is right there into the second spot. And Concerto shows early speed in third at the wood. Between horses, that silver charm with the yellow sleeves racing fourth. Shammy Davis, the horse who was in trouble in the gate, is fifth in the red and white colors. And on the far outside, the long shot, Crimson Classic going to get caught wide at the first turn. Pulpit battling with Freehouse. Those two in a duel up front. Now Pulpit with Shane Sellers takes command. Freehouse on the outside is second by a length and three quarters. At the rail, Carlos Marquez has Concerto right there, saving ground in third. Silver Charm with Gary Stevens fourth on the outside. Phantom on tour is next in the orange colors with Jerry Bailey. Then on the outside is the long shot, Crimson Classic. Along the inside, Captain Bodgett now beginning to close a little ground. Shammy Davis, deeds not words. Hello is third last, to make that fourth last. Along the inside, Crypto Star. Jack Flash is second last and far, far back. Celtic Warrior, about 18 lengths from the front. And back on the front end, the battle continues with Pulpit on the inside and Freehouse on the outside. Flores with Freehouse on the outside and Pulpit with Shane Sellers. Shane asks for a little more speed and gets it. And here comes Gary Stevens with Silver Charm, three wide and gaining. Jerry Bailey looks for a little racing room with Phantom on tour and Captain Bodgett is flying. He's fifth in the red cap on the outside, top of the lane in the Derby. Freehouse gets the lead. Silver Charm on the outside. Pulpit at the rail back to third. And here comes the captain. And down the stretch they come. Silver Charm to the front. On the inside, Freehouse on the outside. Captain Bodgett. It's Captain Bodgett on the outside. Silver Charm at the rail. Those two to the wire. Here's the finish. Silver Charm by a neck with Gary Stevens. Captain Bodgett on the outside, second by five. And Freehouse was third. What an exciting Kentucky Derby. 123 years and you don't get a better race than this. Two years in a row, a great race, a photo finish, a la last year with Grindstone and Cavanier. And this time, it is Silver Charm, okay. the horse who lost to Freehouse yeah, yeah, in each of his right. last two races, but this lane. time he was able to take the lead, and then he was able to hold off the hard-charging Captain Bodgett. With Chris McCarron just for a second, it appeared that the winner began to drift out down the stretch. What do you think the stewards will be looking at right now? Well, they're always going to be looking at the replay. As soon as the horses hit the finish, the stewards always look at the replay immediately to see if there's any kind of impedance during the running of the race. And it appeared that Silver Charm may have drifted out slightly into the path of Captain Bodgett. Bob Baffert, who called this horse a ham sandwich because he was not a, a particularly high-priced horse, an $85,000 purchase, and they have just posted the results to the delight of everybody in the crowd who holds a winning ticket on number six. Bob Baffert could finally forget about the nightmares of Cavanier. Silver Charm had finally given him his first Kentucky Derby victory, but more important, he had taken his first step toward an even more elusive prize, the Triple Crown. As sweet as his Derby victory was, Baffert knew that both Captain Bodgett and Free House would still pose a threat to Silver Charm in the Preakness. What he did not know was that a third horse named Touch Gold would emerge from the pack and prove to be equally as formidable. We now return to Run for the Crown 1997. After Gary Stevens rode Silver Charm to victory in the 97 Kentucky Derby, he was faced with an interesting dilemma. 
couple weeks earlier, not expecting he'd be riding for a chance at the Triple Crown, he committed to ride Touch Gold in the Preakness. Stevens was aboard Touch Gold for his victory in the Lexington Stakes and actually suggested to the horse's trainer, Dave Hoffman's, that he keep Touch Gold fresh by not running him in the Derby and saving him for the Preakness. When Stevens won the Derby, logic dictated he stay on the winner, which gave the mount for Touch Gold to his friend Chris McCarron. When I was able to secure the mount on Touch Gold, I was very excited because he was very impressive, impressive in winning the Lexington Stakes. Gary Stevens was already committed and, and obviously uh, the mount came open and, and when I was able to jump on, I was only too happy to be able to accept the mount. I said I'd like to ride him in the Preakness. Well then I wind up winning the Kentucky Derby and obviously I, I am not going to take off a silver charm to ride him. Chris McCarron picked up the mount and Gary Stevens told me a week or so before, I'm not sure that Chris knows how good Touch Gold is, but he'll know after the Preakness. And I said, would you want to ride Touch Gold in the Preakness? And he said, well, how could I? I won the Kentucky Derby on Silver Charm. I can't switch off of a winner of the Kentucky Derby now. But he said, if there's one horse I fear in the Preakness, it's Touch Gold. And they're up. He's moving fast. And down the stretch they come. Photo finish. And they're off. And Touch Gold stumbled at the start. Loses about four lengths from the far outside as expected. Crip 2 takes the early lead. Freehouse, the gray into second position quickly. Along the inside, Wild Tempest is third. Then Silver Charm on the outside is fourth. And Concerto between horses fifth. Frisk Me Now is sixth in the white cap. Two and a half back to Hoxie, who's racing seventh. Jack at the bank at the rail is eighth. Captain Bodgett in the red cap between horses ninth. And Touch Gold, who stumbled, was last out of the gate in his last but starting a run from far back. The first quarter in 22 and 4. We're on board as they race down the back stretch. On the front end, it's Crip 2 in front by a head. Freehouse on the outside second, the Kentucky Derby winner, Silver Charm with Gary Stevens right there third, just one off the leaders. Wild Tempest on the inside with Bravo is fourth by ahead, and Concerto gains ground in fifth. Touch Gold is sixth on the inside between horses and looking for some racing room. Then on the outside, Frisk Me Now. Captain Budget is third last, and the entry last and second last. Around the turn. Now Freehouse has the lead by a neck, and on the outside, Silver Charmer second, Concerto three wide in third. On the inside, Touch Gold is fourth. Captain Bodgett threading his way between horses is now in fifth position. On the outside, Frisbee now is sixth. A tight pack as they straighten away in the lane in the Preakness. Freehouse in front. Silver Charm on the outside coming on to challenge. Touch Gold at the rail. And down the stretch they come in the Preakness. On the inside, Freehouse. On the outside, Silver Charm. Noses apart. 50 yards to go. Freehouse and Silver Charm. Captain Bodgett is flying. Photo finish! Was it Silver Charm on the outside? Was it Freehouse on the rail? Neither jockey raising their arm in victory. It's a photo finish, noses apart. What a finish. Freehouse on the inside, the gray. Silver Charm on the outside with Captain Bodgett third, only a whisker away. There's the Kentucky Derby winner. Did he make it two out of three? We'll just have to wait for the photo. There's a look at the photo about half a head right now as uh, it's Gary Stevens in the middle winning the race. I'm pretty numb now. I mean, now that I, it's just sinking in that I won this race and I think it's going to be great for racing and I hope I don't let the, uh, the racing fans down for the Triple Crown and maybe Freehouse and Captain Bodge will stay home and let me win the Triple Crown. What a, <laughs> Silver Charm by the narrowest of margins was able to hold off the competition yet again. He was now only one victory away from horse racing's most hallowed achievement, the Triple Crown. But even more amazing than the finish by Silver Charm was the fourth place finish by Touch Gold, only one and a half lengths back. The thing about the Preakness is that uh, the horse that was uh, off the board, Touch Gold, probably ran the best race of them all. I was a very big Touch Gold fan, and I thought his race in the Preakness, I thought he showed all the characteristics of what you would ever hope for in a racehorse. Coming out of the gate, touch goal goes to his knees. Nose on the ground, you think he's not even gonna get up, but he gets up. 
Why he stumbled, I just don't know. But all I know, all I can figure is that he pushed off so hard that his back feet slipped. And when they slipped, in order to try to recover and recover quickly enough, he overreached with his hind feet and grabbed a front one. And once he stepped on his front foot with his hind foot, it made him stumble badly. They get onto the back stretch. Chris McCarron, all kinds of traffic problems, has to check his horse. Far turn, same thing. He's got three strikes against him. Through the stretch, no place to run. Touch gold showed me more in defeat in the Preakness than any horse did all year winning. I was not just amazed, I was shocked. For him to be able to put in the kind of performance after what he went through was, was very, very impressive. And uh, it set him up well for the Belmont, believe it or not, it really did. Up next, Touch Gold tries to stop Silver Charm's 1997 run for the crown. We now return to Run for the Crown 1997. The 97 Preakness featured its closest three horse finish since 1932. Now, entering the Belmont Stakes, Silver Charm was only one victory away from winning the first Triple Crown in almost two decades. Things seemed to be falling into place for Silver Charm. Four days after the Preakness, the always dangerous Captain Bodgett was forced into retirement due to an injury. Now it looked as though only two horses could prevent Silver Charm from achieving horse racing immortality. His arch rival Freehouse and the gritty competitor Touch Gold. And they're up. He's moving fast. And down the stretch they come. Photo finish. And they're off. And Touch Gold came away just a touch slightly. On the inside, it's Silver Charm going right to the front as Wild Rush on the outside moves to challenge. Wild Rush with the white cap takes command. On the inside, Silver Charm back into second position, but wide at the first turn. He actually floated out with Gary Stevens aboard, and that left room for Touch Gold, who now charges through on the wood, and Touch Gold takes command from his stable mate, Wild Rush, on the outside. Then comes the Derby and Preakness winner, Silver Charm, who's third at this point. Then one length on the outside, it's Freehouse, followed by Irish Silence. Mr. Energizer is second last, and then a gap of 10 lengths to the distant trailer. The late running Crypto Star with Pat Day trails the field 13 lengths from the leader. And the leader is Touch Gold, who had all the trouble in the Preakness. Chris McCarran aboard, leading the pack by a three parts of a length. His stable mate, Wild Rush is second, then trying for the Triple Crown, Gary Stevens puts Silver Charm in gear and he moves up on the outside. Four wide is Freehouse, down the back stretch. It's Wild Rush in front by a neck. On the outside, Silver Charm challenges. Three quarters in 113 and four, that's good time. Continuing down the back stretch. It's Wild Rush continuing to show the way. The Illinois Derby winner has the lead by three parts of a length. Silver Charm on the outside is second, and here comes Freehouse inching up a closer third as Touch Gold backs up into fourth position along the inside. But two and a half lengths cover those fours. It's six lengths farther back to Irish Silence. Mr. Energizer and Crypto Star is still absolutely last, but it looks like he's gaining a bit. On the front end, a wall of horses with Silver Charm between them. On the inside, that's Wild Rush on the outside. Here comes Freehouse, and Touch Gold looks for some racing room with McCarran, and he moves to the outside for the drive in the Belmont. Straightening away in the lane, Silver Charm and Freehouse. They're at it again. Silver Charm under whip with Stevens on the inside. Freehouse on the outside, and Touch Gold is third, and down the stretch they come. Three of them in a line. Silver Charm at the rail. Touch Gold on the outside. Touch Gold puts a hand in front. 50 yards to go, touch gold, touch gold wins it by half a length, denying Silver Charm who finished second his triple crown. Third under the wire was Freehouse. What a stretch drive, what a Belmont. Freehouse was bottled up. I thought I was gonna win by 15 lengths and when I turned him loose, to my disbelief, I couldn't believe that Silver Charm never let me buy him, never. Coming around the final turn, I had Freehouse just in front of me and um, there was no way that Freehouse was going to beat us. I mean, that's how confident I was with the quarter mile left. Uh, and the, the feeling 
in the excitement I had from the 16th pole um, was twofold of any excitement I'd ever felt winning the Kentucky Derby. Tried to get by him for the next three sixteenths of a mile to no avail, and here it comes sprinting by us on the outside. Where'd this guy come from? And it was touch gold. It looked like it was going to be free house and silver charm, and Gary thought the same way. And they just never saw that other horse. Then I had it in my head before the race that I ever had a chance to get to silver charm. I wanted to get as far away from him as I could because he possesses this ability to be able to look another horse in the eye and just dare that horse to go by him. He knew he wanted to stay away from me. He didn't want to be anywhere close to us uh, uh, at the finish of the Belmont Stakes. And uh, he rode a great race, and uh, Silver Charm never saw him and, until we were galloping out after the race. And by then, obviously, it was too late. It was those two coming down to the wire. And Chris McCarron comes through with touch gold on the outside. Again, one of those moments in sports where denying the Triple Crown to Silver Charm turned into as much of a story as Silver Charm getting the Triple Crown. So Silver Charm joined a growing parade of Triple Crown near misses. Since the firm's successful run for the crown back in 78, five horses had managed to win the first two legs, only to falter at the challenging mile and a half of the Belmont Stakes, long advertised as the true test of champions. But Silver Charm near miss number five had won admiration in defeat and in so doing revived the sport. Said writer Bill Knack, he revealed himself to be not only a cult of exceptional physical gifts combining speed and stamina, but also an appealing, gritty alley fighter. On that June day at Belmont, 70,000 had come to see him win, the largest crowd to attend a race in New York since Seattle Slew's run for the crown back in 77. And though Silver Charm was no Seattle Slew, he had done enough, enough to earn a standing ovation that day at Belmont for turning back the clock and for bringing some magic back to the sport of horse racing. Once again, for all of us at ESPN Classic, I'm Chris Fowler. Thanks for watching Run for the Crown.